welcome. Today we are discussing the skincare management system, which is, I show this a few times, this foundational system in the Jan Rene Skin Research line. And we're able to discuss it more in depth and who better to hear from than Jan Rene herself. I'm so happy to see you guys join today. Okay, so Jan Marini has been a product formulator owning numerous patents. That is something I love about her where she is an innovator. In fact, she was named one of the top 20 innovators in the aesthetic space by New Beauty Magazine. She has spoken at numerous medical conferences and been recognized by the Royal Society of Medicine in London. So she's doing great things and has, um, has really positively influenced the skincare world. So, hello, Jen. <laughs> oh gosh, Lisa, it's so good to see you. You know, Jen, every time we either are about to do a live or we've done one, I hear from followers or clients just how much they learned from it. And it's just such a unique opportunity. So I'm very grateful that you would do this. Well, with thank you. I hope they've missed us. Cause it's been a while. Yeah, <laughs> me too. So we're gonna just like uh, we're gonna bring it all back and make them remember why why this is so great. So today we're discussing. I mentioned skincare management system, which I have my like, my products lined out in case I need to reference them. So you know, Jana, is this like? I know you had been you've been a product formulator and formulated for other companies prior to starting your own. But is the skincare management system? Is that like the foundation of how you approach doing your skincare line? Absolutely. So first of all, let me start off by saying this. I'm going to kind of approach this in a roundabout way. Right. But you know, I, I, I probably have said this before, but when I talk to the media, I usually know, I can predict there's always two questions they're going to ask me. And the first one is, do I use my own products, which is kind of <laughs> silly because I do. And the second one is, what is it that inspires me and motivates me? And why do I do all the research and development and read all the medical journals and develop products? And I give the same answer every single time. And that is that I'm selfish because I don't want adult acne and I don't want rosacea and I don't want discoloration. And I'd like to keep fine lines and wrinkles away as long as, you know, I can and have healthy hopefully radiant skin that looks as young as possible, as long as possible. And I always say, I don't want another product. I want a solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, the skincare management system is a solution. And if I'm talking with a world famous doctor, if I'm talking with an A-list celebrity, doesn't matter how educated they are, doesn't matter how sophisticated they are, it always starts off with the skincare management system. So you're absolutely right, Lisa. That's the basis for everything. And it addresses all these common skin concerns. It addresses acne. It addresses the appearance of rosacea, appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, textural changes, large pores. And that all comes under the heading of skin rejuvenation. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of times when you say skin rejuvenation, yeah. the first thing that comes to individual's mind is lines and wrinkles. You know, it's mm -hmm. about aging. And really, from my perspective, skin rejuvenation is taking the skin to a level where it looks really perfected, where it looks glowing. You don't see the signs of rosacea. You don't see the signs of acne. The skin can dramatically look younger, smoother, much more radiant, much more refined. You can literally transform the skin. And one other thing that I want to say before you know we get further into this yeah is that it should start off with a really important question so everybody who is viewing they should ask themselves this question but this is what you know we ask when we do consultations and that is if there was something you could change or improve about your skin what would it be now most people you you think of your first concern you might say well i have acne or i wish i didn't have discoloration Mm -hmm. And then you ask yourself again, if there's something else you could change or improve about your skin, what would it be? Typically, people have three or four concerns. That's your runway. If you are purchasing product, it should be because you have confidence 
that every one of those products is going to address those concerns. Yeah. And I always say, think how you would feel if you could address every one of those concerns. Think how you'd feel if you look in the mirror and you don't see the breakouts or you don't see the discoloration and the skin just looks really smooth and really radiant. So that's the skincare management system. And then there are things that we can do on top of that, which we'll get into, that can take it even further. Yeah, I have not in 20 years almost as an esthetician, I have never approached a consultation, never met a client, a prospective client, who if I asked what they would like to change about their skin said, nothing really, you know, everyone has something. But as you know, when we dive into that, whether they knew it or not initially, those concerns, there's more concerns when we really go for, and what else, you know, they, it might start with they came in for acne, but mm -hmm. there is always multiple boxes checked of fine lines and wrinkles and dark circles. And it, it goes on and on. And the great thing that they're really shocked by is I can address all of these. I have the tools to address all of these. And that seems crazy. So then when, when you talk about, okay, but this management system is going to the same system treat discoloration, adult acne, uh, rosacea, like how do you have products that can suit all of the above? And for a variation of ages, whether we're 25 or 65, how are we using those products and they're addressing the co such varied concerns? Yeah, you know, it's, it's that, that question people will say, well, okay, how can we all be on the same system but have different concerns? Now, I'm gonna give you one example. Mm -hmm. And it actually goes beyond this, but this one example will really illustrate that particular point. So the system, as you saw, comes in a box. Yeah. And there are five products, and they're numbered one through five, which makes it really easy. I always say it's a cleanser, it's a sunscreen, and three products in between. Now, mm -hmm. the third product is called BioClear. And BioClear is a combination of glycolic, salicylic, and azelaic acid. Azelaic acid, for example, is sold by prescription for rosacea. It's sold by prescription for acne. It's one of the best resurfacing agents we've ever seen for the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and pore size and just texture. And also, it is a pigment lifting agent. So it makes the skin so much brighter. It makes the skin look so much more even toned. That's an example of right there, just that one yeah. ingredient in that product. Now, also... There's, I said there was, it was glycolic, salicylic, and azelaic. Mm -hmm. Glycolic acid, at the very simplest level, dissolves and dislodges the glyc substance or cellular cement in between cells on the surface of the skin. It does this without being abrasive. It does it without being inflammatory. And it causes them to lift. So the skin just starts to look really smooth and really radiant and just more perfected and younger looking now. Because of glycolic acid's small molecular weight, it actually can get into the follicle. In the follicle, the beginning of the acne process is where the cells lining the follicle stick together. And so what it does in the follicle is it dissolves and dislodges the glulac substance or cellular cement between cells, causes these cells to lift apart. It actually interrupts the acne process. And it gets rid of, helps to get rid of cellular retention or follicular retention. Now, when you can get rid of or reduce follicular retention, what happens at the very least is that your skin looks so much more refined. Your follicles literally within, you know, you heard all the time, people say, is it my imagination? But within a day or two, you start to notice that your follicles look so much smaller. And we could talk a lot about glycolic because we also know that the studies show that it stimulates collagen. That it chemically is categorized as a moisturizer because it stimulates the substances in the skin, mucopolysaccharides, ceramides, phospholipids, hyaluronic acid, that give the skin volume, make it moist, make it, help it to resist various kinds of conditions and react appropriately under these conditions. And then we have salicylic acid. Now, we've all heard of that. We know it's good for acne. We know it helps to make the skin a little bit brighter. But when you put those three together, I've never seen anything for home care that can resurface the skin, can address so many different issues. And we'll go, you know, as we go through the system, every one of the products are designed to support 
and address all these common skin concerns. Yeah, it's amazing because BioClear, we've had lovely comments about BioClear is the holy grail, which <laughs> it, 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 is, it becomes that product that is a game changer where, but a lot of people are unfamiliar with this or we find that often that when we're, they hear exfoliation and automatically think scrubs or resurfacing mm -hmm. that way. And for a lot of those conditions that you mentioned, whether it's rosacea or whether it's, I would say even discoloration and acne, scrubs just are so limited or not ideal in this where BioClear is doing something different that they're not quite used to and not being abrasive. It, it really is such a, a changer, but I think people are also so surprised that they're not necessarily drier on it than what yeah. stuff they've experienced before. So um, it does so many great things. Okay, so. Oh, by the way, and I just wanna say, I can take somebody who is incredibly dry mm -hmm. because a lot of that has to do with something called increased corneocyte cohesion. It's where the cells mm -hmm. build up on the outside of the skin and they harden and they cornify. Put them on BioClear and they can't believe how moist, how smooth, how much softer and more hydrated their skin is. Yeah, and another thing I like when you mentioned about the uh, it reduces follicular retention because mm -hmm. something explained is when we see BioClear, it's instead of taking from explains where people just feel smooth, it looks more refined. If a lot of exfoliation elements, you you kind of can feel smooth, but the skin doesn't take on some of these mm -hmm. um, refining elements. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned in the management system, before we dive into some of those individuals a little bit more too, in the management system, we have five products. Mm -hmm. Why is five necessary? Because some people are all about like, some people are product junkies and some people are minimalists with their skincare. Sure. Or they what we only truly need. So why are the five in here necessary? Well, like I said, it's cleanser, sunscreen, and three products. Mm -hmm. And so there's a couple of reasons. So first of all, it's really popular today for companies to market to the consumer that we have everything in one product. You only need to use one product. It's so easy. And it, I'm going to tell you, that is not possible. It just right. isn't. Now, here's, the reason, here's a couple of reasons why. First of all, so if I'm developing a product, from a mathematical standpoint, I have 100% to work with. That formula can't be 150% or 175%. Everything has to add up to 100%. Your first 50%, typically, or more, is water. Because you can't bake a cake without liquid. That's why you water is the first ingredient. And yeah. then you've got to account for stabilizers and binders and spreading agents. Because you don't want to open up a product and it's just a separated mess. It also has to spread. It has to feel good on the skin. There has to be the right vehicle for that product. And then you get into your actives. And maybe you need 12% of something, and maybe you need 5% of something, and you need another percentage of this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden you've run out of room. Yeah. So now here's what I could do. I could simply put in smaller amounts knowing that it's not going to have the same benefit and charge just as much, charge more for it. I mean, there's some products out there that you can pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for so that's one reason. The second reason is that a lot of ingredients are not compatible in the same formula. Now, as an example, for glycolic acid to have the kinds of effects that we've talked about from a medical perspective, for home care, it needs to be at a pH of around 3.25, somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. Retinol needs to be at a pH of 5. Lipicide will see needs to be at a pH of 7. So you put certain things together in the same formula and you have them sit there they render each other inactive and then you have different ways in terms of the formulation process in which they need to be manufactured something might need more heat something might need less heat something might need high speed low speed mm -hmm. and where if you don't do it properly then you lose efficacy and it's not it's not just about the chemist so a chemist when they go to, to get their degree in chemistry they're not getting a degree to do cosmetics per se. They may spend their entire life working on fire retardants. They might spend their entire life testing food samples. So usually this is something that they would learn after they get their degree. 
And they're not experts in how a product works. They're experts in how to stabilize it and make certain that, again, when you open it up, it's not full of bacteria and it's not going to separate. Yeah. And so in terms of if somebody says, well, will this have an effect on collagen? That chemist would probably say, I don't know. You're going to, I, here, look at the, what the raw material manufacturer says. Yeah. So it's a very complex process. And one of the things that I like to refer to with regard to this is something called layered technology. So you can't put everything in one product. Mm -hmm. So each product is literally built from the ground up and each product is made to be extremely efficacious and beneficial. And by the way, I'm not someone that comes up with an ingredient that says this ingredient is the holy grail. And so it's going to be in this cream and it's going to be in the eye cream and it's going to be in the face cream and the neck cream. And you just put it throughout. Because when you have various kinds of skin concerns, you have to be able to address them with various types of topical agents. So that's kind of the long and short of it. I love that, but that made me think of a question. I hope it's not too complex, Jen. Not, not that it's too complex for you, but too complex of an answer. Um, so how do you approach that formulation in terms of that makes total sense with, with the pro your products as I know them, as far as you're not just like, let me find this key ingredient and how I incorporate it. But I know you read, I is knowing you for years, I know you read medical journals like viciously and you are all into what's going on and all these effects. So how do you approach when you produce a new product, especially, are you looking for, is it just concern based of like, and maybe in the case of Luminate, how do we address dark circles and such? And then you're working with different things to be find best formula. Okay. So it can be, it can be kind of a combination of things. Okay. So when I'm reading medical journals and I take journals, everything that from oncology to, it could be dermatology, plastic surgery, uh, oncology, which is cancer. I mean, virtually every kind of modality. And I'm not looking necessarily for things on skincare. I'm looking for things that might be related. Like with diabetes, we learn about glycation. Um, with one of my patents actually came from cancer research. And so I, I look for those things and I say, gee, does, is this applicable in skincare? But how is it applicable? Is it applicable to a particular concern where we can really have an effect on that concern? And then the other way around is that, for example, we know that one of the number one concerns is acne or another number one concern is discoloration. And so it's about looking for technologies and looking for breakthroughs that can actually provide a formula that's better and better. You know, for example, um, Luminate is not the first lightening product or for appearance of discoloration that I have introduced. Mm -hmm. it, 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 I, over the years, there have been other, there have been technologies that have gotten better and better and better. And we've been able to improve on it significantly. And so that's something that you know, I'm constantly working on as well. Yeah. For some context, if anyone watching, I mean, I go back to when Jan had to, uh, retinol from 20 years ago that's totally different. Well, I get different yeah. from now. So I've seen technologies change and just improve of when I remember age intervention, retinol plus was introduced. And at first I was intimidated by it and then it's been so excited and it stays phenomenal for years. So not to digress, but let's go to, okay, so we're talking about the management system, we're in depth. Let's start through with the cleanser, the bioglycolic cleanser. Why a bioglycolic cleanser specifically? Okay, so number one, when people hear the word glycolic, oftentimes they think of something that's harsh because it's glycolic mm -hmm. acid. And so, first of all, again, chemically, glycolic acid is actually categorized as a moisturizer. It's just on the acid side. In other words, it's not the alkaline side, it's the acid side. But what I can tell you about this cleanser is 12% glycolic acid, and it's the most gentle cleanser that I make. And I have two other cleansers that are non-glycolic. But the base of this is very similar to Cetaphil. And probably everybody who's watched has heard of Cetaphil, because if you go to a dermatologist and you've got an allergic reaction or you have something, your skin is reacting, 
the doctor says, go to the drugstore and buy Cetaphil. It's like the standard for being very gentle mm -hmm. and something that is not going to aggravate the skin. Now, the other thing, though, is you could use the best cleanser in the world. I don't care if it's a micellular cleanser. I don't care if it's you know some type of essential oil or whatever it is. The molecules are too large to get into the follicle. Glycolic acid is a very small molecule. It's the smallest molecule of all the alpha hydroxy acids. It actually gets into the follicle. And so it has sort of a follicular cleansing action. It gets rid of that retentive material. And again, it can help to interrupt the acne process. Acne starts in the follicle. When you have a lesion out here, that's the end of the process. We're obsessed with, gee, what can we do? You know, can we scrub it off? How do we get rid of it? You prevent it. That's the end of the process. So it starts in the follicle. And so glycolic acid is that first step in being able to actually have something that has that sort of follicular cleansing action. Not only that, but it resurfaces the outside of the skin because, again, it dissolves and dislodges. The glue-like substance or cellular mm -hmm. cement helps those cells to lift apart. And so it makes the skin just look so smooth. It makes it look so resurfaced. And resurfacing is a term that I use mm -hmm. because it's, it, I like to use that term to sort of denote that the skin is perfected. Mm -hmm. But there are two terms that are very popular out of Korea. One is glass skin. Oh, yeah. So the skin looks just it, it denotes skin that looks really glassy and reflective and perfected. And the other one is cloud skin. And cloud skin, my understanding, is where the skin doesn't have those obvious imperfections. You don't see the pores. You don't see the, you know, signs of rosacea. You don't see acne breakout. You don't see discoloration. So it's, it's just this perfected look. Now, what I will say, I've seen some pretty bad skin that comes out of Korea. And I've also seen some really beautiful <laughs> skin. So it's not like <laughs> they have yeah. the corner on the market, but kind of that's, that's their goal is to have that yeah. very perfected look. And so resurfacing is such an important part of that. And one of the things I want to mention, because, you know, this is going to also apply as we talk about some of the other products. When you look at the so-called aging process mm -hmm. and you look at it from a very simplistic standpoint, there's two aspects one is the stratum corneum. So this is what we touch out here. It's a dead layer. And the skin, the cells in that dead layer lay like shingles on a roof. They're supposed to lay like fish scales in a really organized manner so that it's, again, you have this translucency and you have this reflective nature. And as we age, those cells become to be, get, they get very disorganized and they begin to kind of pile up. And they also can harden. So they start to sort of dry out. They can make the face feel tighter and drier. Doesn't mean you're producing less oil. Doesn't necessarily mean you have dry skin. There's actually a medical term called increased corneocyte cohesion. Mm -hmm. So the cells sort of shrink, they harden, and they cornify. And they're very disorganized. And the skin can look thicker. It looks coarser. Your pores look more obvious. It just, just has more of a duller look to it. Now... Your dermis, on the other hand, is 80% collagen. So you want a really thin, compact stratum corneum. Okay? You want it to look like a baby skin, a teenager skin. Thin, really organized, so that it has the ability to protect itself under different conditions and respond appropriately. You want your dermis to be really thick. You want it to be thick and robust. As I like the word age, robust. Your dermis thins. So this thickens, dermis thins. And it starts thinning about 1% a year or more in your 20s. And depending on how much sun exposure you had in the past, how much sun exposure you have in your future, your lifestyle, your diet, stress, it can thin faster. Um, and when you get to be in your 50s or 60s or beyond, you can have lost as much as 50-60% or more of your dermis. That's bad. That looks bad. Yeah. So again, thin stratum corneum, thick dermis. That's what glycolic does. And when people say to me, but Jan, if I use glycolic acid and I use retinoids and I use all these different things, mm -hmm. won't I thin my skin? And my answer is, I hope so. Thin compact stratum corneum, thick dermis. Yeah, because the opposite we see with especially an aged skin 
is when I mm -hmm. feel their skin, that's one difference is you can feel it not so robust. I always call it meaty underneath uh -huh. and it's very thick at the surface opposite uh -huh. of what you're explaining what we want. Okay, beautiful. Let's go. Now, we're, now let's talk about C. Estes Serum. And you once called this the most complex product you formulated. So I will let you explain that. C. Estes Serum, a lot of vitamin C's on the market. I've mentioned why we don't want just cheap nonsense vitamin C off, you know, $9 on Amazon. Um, tell us about C. Estes Serum. Why well, is this essential? It's, it's referred to as a vitamin C product, but it's, it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. it so is. when, first of all, one of the reasons why vitamin C is important topically is because without vitamin C in your body, you can't make collagen. Right. If you didn't have, and you can't manufacture your own vitamin C, so you have to get it from an outside source. And we know that if you can get it into the skin topically, it can connect with receptor sites, it can actually really help with collagen, but also it can have the effect of protecting the skin from UV exposure. Now, when people think of vitamin C, the first thing that comes to mind and what you see virtually everywhere is ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid, the problem with ascorbic acid, and if you don't believe me, you can just talk to an independent chemist, it's not stable. So when ascorbic acid is exposed to sunlight, it's exposed to oxygen, it's exposed to temperature changes, what you find in your bathroom, it begins to degrade very, very quickly. So number one, we work with a lipid soluble C known, known as ascorbyl palmitate, chemically known as l ascorbic acid 6 palmitate. And first of all, it's completely stable. So it has a minimum two year shelf life. It doesn't break down in the presence of the various things that you find in your bathroom, whether it's sunlight or whether it's temperature changes and all of that. And just to give you an example on uh, one of the salient points, it's 30 times more potent than ascorbic acid at even one quarter of the amount. You can go on to Medline, the world's largest medical library, and you can probably find about 2,500 articles on ascorbyl palmitate efficacy. So it's anti-inflammatory, it's completely stable, and I could go on and on about vitamin C, and I could go into a lot of other studies on this. But let's just say, for argument's sake, we couldn't agree, and so we just took the vitamin C out of the product. The product would still be extraordinary. And the reason is because of something called DMAE, dimethylaminoethanol. Now, DMAE is a precursor to a major chemical mess messenger, acetylcholine. And acetylcholine plays a number of roles, but this goes back to when this was studied in Alzheimer's. So years ago, when they observed Alzheimer's and they observed and they did autopsies on uh, individuals that had Alzheimer's, what they saw was a tangled mass of neurons, and they assumed at that point that probably what played a major role in that was acetylcholine. Now, we know that it does play a role, but it's beta amyloid protein. But back then, they were looking at ways in which they could maybe somehow increase, increase acetylcholine and hopefully have an effect on cognitive function. Maybe it wouldn't stop Alzheimer's, but people might be able to function better longer. And so what they did is, in one study, they gave Alzheimer's patients a, um, a food-grade substance. It was DMAE, because you, you do get it in your diet. They gave them in a much, much higher amount. And they did find that it actually had an effect, positive effect on cognitive function. And it, again, doesn't cure the disease, but mm -hmm. it became sort of the the basis for a lot of the drugs that were developed that people would take today that would maybe slow down the progress, have better cognitive functioning longer. Now, what they found out was, is that when you applied this topically, it was having an effect on the skin. And the reason is, is because another function of acetylcholine is that it sparks from your nerve into every muscle in your body. And what that does is, it causes correct anatomical muscle position. It causes the muscle to kind of pull up. Now, you, if you want, you can call it muscle tone. Mm -hmm. and so as you age, we don't know. Maybe you don't produce as much acetylcholine. Maybe it's the receptor size compromised. It doesn't pick it up the same way. But nevertheless, you don't see that same muscle tone. So, for example, 
if you exercise like a fiend and you're 60, you're not going to have the same muscle tone you had at, at 30 or 40. And at 30, you're not going to have the same muscle tone you did at, you know, a 10 year old. Had. Right. So even your, your, your facial nerve sparks acetylcholine into the muscle and it helps to keep your cheek pads higher and your jaw more defined and just to give you contours, a very small piece of that puzzle. But what they found out, and this is a study that was presented at the American Academy of Dermatology, half face double blind, random placebo. The individuals in which they had the, the acetylcholine and they would have put it on half their face, right up to the hairline, on the neck and behind the ear. They found that the cheek pad looked a little bit higher. The one eyebrow was higher than the other, nasal labial fold more pulled back, jawline looked more defined, neck looked better. And that the effect was persistent. Now that's a medical term. And what that means is that it, let's say for example, that you used it for three months or six months, and then for some reason you didn't. That it's not like you'd wash your face and the effect goes away. Mm -hmm. but that you would have, it would simply, your skin would, it would have a permanence. Your skin would simply begin to age back. Now, most so-called firming lifting products have film formers. What that means is it's not like you feel a film on your face, mm -hmm. but it's something that kind of tenses the skin and temporarily makes it look firmer. That's not what this is. Right. And what I'll tell you, if you've never used Siesta before, you can sort of draw an imaginary line down your face and put it on half your face right up to the, into the hairline on the neck and behind the ear. And you can see the difference between the two sides and about starting in less than a minute. And you can see the full effect in under five minutes. And then progressively, it gets better over time. It's, I mean, to a point. Yeah. And the other thing <laughs> is that, yeah, it's one of the most powerful anti-inflammatories we've seen. It's also a delivery agent. There's kind of a method to my madness is why you put siesta on first. Mm -hmm. And it has just so many different attributes that are so beneficial. So that's, that that's siesta. Well, you answer one small question that we get off, and I think we should clear it up as when siesta often when you squirt it out and it starts out kind of a creamy color and near the end it gets a little more of a caramel color and people go oh no is it oxidizing and i'm like nope you want to explain that it's one? not the vitamin c let me tell you something dmae one of the reasons this is such a complex product is that in the manufacturing process dmae will turn everything brown and it's not because mm -hmm. it's making things in inactive it right. just has that effect so we had to find a way to manufacture it, but over time, it does darken, and that is not representative of losing efficacy. So that's a really good question. Okay. Um, thank you. The next, um, how much ever you want to go into it, we talked about the different percentage of the acids in BioClear. Is there anything else you mm -hmm. want to say on BioClear? I think, you know, I think we covered BioClear. Okay. We covered it pretty good. It's, yes, it's incredible. Just know it's it's essential in there. All right. So then we go to the, on to hydration or moisturizer. And, you know, uh, some people think they don't need moisturizer, maybe if they're oilier or what's uh, also you, I, you do moisturizer a little differently where we're not simply just create, putting some emollient something on the skin. Now, what makes the moisturizer so special? So I will show you. We have both transformation cream and age intervention face cream. So maybe you want to discuss also why the two different. Okay. Well, one thing I want to mention that you brought up and it was really good is, you know, sometimes people say, well, I don't need a moisturizer. Do you know that you can actually have more transepidermal moisture loss and more inflammation with skin that's oily than skin that's dry. And so you can have a, a, a significantly compromised barrier function. Now, what you want to do if you have oily skin is you just want to use something that is going to provide you help with barrier function, but it doesn't have to be overly creamy. 
It can be made for somebody that has more of an oilier skin. So, mm -hmm. for example, in the case of transformation, we also make a transformation serum. That's what I now, use. So, when I use the term moisturizer or hydrator, I really use that because it's a term that people identify with. And what this actually is, this is a vehicle for more technology. And yes, does it help with barrier function? Yes, it helps to keep the skin nice and moist and help to help have the skin be able to react appropriately under various conditions? Yes. But I'm going to just point out a couple of the technologies. Now, we were the first company in the world to use transfer and growth factor beta 1. That's where I got the name transformation. Mm -hmm. And transfer and growth factor beta 1, there's, there's a, a long, interesting story about it. But suffice it to say, the short of it is that Dr. Weedo of Jefferson University, who was considered at the time to be the foremost researcher in this area, stated in an interview that it stimulates a type of collagen you don't produce after the age of 30, and he stated that it was just the thing to keep the skin young indefinitely. Now, secondly, it also has something called thymus and beta-4, which is my patent. Thymus and beta-4 was originally discovered in the thymus of cattle. But it's in every cell in your body except red blood cells. And one of the things it does is it helps as a mediator in wound healing. So think about this. When you wound yourself, your body goes into overdrive. It produces collagen. It has to repair. It has to get back to some normalcy. And so things that have to do with wound healing can be very powerful. And in this case, it's believed to be able to actually correct instructions coming from your DNA. Now, there's also anti-inflammatories. It's also peptides. There's a whole host of things in this product, which is one of the reasons why it is so, so popular. And, and it feels good. Now, age intervention, which is in the dry skin kit, um, is a little different because if I were to define, if I were to give you a definition of aging, there's two definitions. One would be really simplistic. Aging is an inflammatory process. It's inflammatory based. The other one is it's a loss of capacity and immune function in every organ in the body, including the skin. And so as you get older, and typically you tend to see truly dry skin in individuals that are a little older, although anybody can use age intervention, mm -hmm. um, you're talking about the skin's immune function. And one of the things this has in it is interferon alpha 2b, which is another one of my patents. Interferon alpha 2b is an immune messenger your body produces. And they also inject it for malignant melanoma, hepatitis C, adult leukemia, because what it does is it kind of revs up your own immune function so that your body is able to suppress whether it's malignant melanoma, whether it is uh, hepatitis C, adult leukemia, or these things. And so that your immune function functions better. And so it's believed that interferon alpha 2b can have a substantial effect and your skin may be hopefully functioning more like it did when it was a lot younger. Now, there's other things in there. There's something in there that actually is a chemical that comes from plankton uh, called photolyse that corrects your, DNA, your, correct your instructions coming your DNA up to 47% at a time. And there's, you know, some essential fatty acids and some other things that are just really good for individuals that do have a truly dry skin. Mm -hmm. uh, the good news is your skin may be, may be more compromised in the wintertime. So uh, yeah, there's times where I use age intervention mm -hmm. at night and I use transformation during the day. So you can kind of mix and match. Um, the majority of people, the largest percentage are going to be on the normal combo system. That's yeah, we definitely have the majority on that. But my mom, I've had her use age intervention face cream forever. And it's there's nothing, nothing like it. The skin has a totally different experience. But that's I love I love when you dive deep in that. You know, okay. I have to tell you that Please. the comment I get when people use age intervention that really have dry skin mm -hmm. is they'll say, Well, I've used tons of dry skin products, and yeah, they soften the outside of the skin, but this is like it changed my skin from the inside out. It's like mm -hmm. my skin actually functions differently and so it, it 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 really does address some of those issues that are aligned kind of with you know people that have drier skin yeah and i love for all the reasons you mentioned like going into those specific ingredients and how they're affecting the skin at kind of a deeper level instead of just 
Mm -hmm. Heavy people always think they'll say, I need a heavier moisturizer. And exactly. though we can have some weight to it, what they're missing often is something that's changing some processes in the skin. So, and you've heard it. this, I know you've heard this, Lisa, over and over again, is that people will say, I use the system and I feel like I have less on my skin than if I were just using two products. Yeah, you'd never come away using the five steps. And, and I mean, of course, then we could talk about the accelerators we throw in, but I can do all the layering and I do not have cakiness or, or problems with penetration. People talk about product pilling and it's balling at the surface. None of those problems. So, no. and I'm an oily skin and I layer up. So, <laughs> so before we um, even can talk, maybe we can get to accelerators. We have time is shortening a little bit, but um, sunscreen. Real quick. Our last step. We'll, we'll, we'll be really quick. Okay. Sunscreen is not just a cosmetic issue. It is a health issue. It is essential. You need to wear it outside. You need to wear it inside. I can't stress that enough. But people in the U.S., the statistics are that only 33% of Americans wear sunscreen consist cons cons consistently. And we're not because we're stupid. We hear all of the admonitions. We hear all the time, you've got to wear sunscreen. And it's dangerous not to. And if you talk to people, they, they give you these answers like, well, I don't do it because it's bad for the environment or it's bad for this. But you know what the real answer is? The real answer is people don't like how it feels. Yeah. So if you have a product that makes your skin feel like you're going to break out, or it looks greasy, or it's not compatible with makeup, or it's just, it gets in your eyes, it burns. I mean, all of those things. It's why, I understand why you wouldn't want to wear it. And I will just tell you, we make three different sunscreens. I'm going to talk really quick about the SPF 33 because it has to be my favorite, but we make a tinted sunscreen, which you can use like a foundation. I mean, and that is just, yeah, it, it's, a, it's magnificent. But what I want to say is all of our sunscreens, number one, have an oil capture system. And what that means is, is that if you tend to have maybe combination or you're really oily, it has an unlimited capacity to pick up the oil, but it cannot pick up actives and it cannot pick up water. If you're dry, it leaves you soft and silky if you're, and balanced. And if you're oily, it leaves you soft and silky and balanced. And I will tell you, it feels better. My skin feels better with it on than without it. So when I wear it indoors, it's not like I'm forcing myself to wear something I don't like. My skin looks better and feels better with it. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, it's not about SPF factor. The difference between an SPF 30 and an SPF 50, 75 is minuscule. It's minuscule. It really has to do with how much of the spectrum it covers. And you could have an SPF 100 that doesn't cover the entire spectrum. So we have the highest rating in terms of that coverage. Mm -hmm. But the other thing to keep in mind is, even if you wear what you think is the best sunscreen in the world, you'll still absorb about 3% radiation into your DNA. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. And so you really need to do things to kind of help to address that as well. So one of the things that is in this is something called phytomelanin. Now, phytomelanin is chemically identical to your own melanin. And your own melanin is the most protective agent you have in your body. Because it's anti-inflammatory, it's anti-aging, and it's protective. So the more melanin you have, the more protected your skin is. If you have really dark pigment, you don't see lines and wrinkles. You don't get them. So that's one of the reasons why as soon as you go out in the sun, your body starts to produce more melanin, and you may tan or you may discolor because it's trying to protect you. This comes from the date palm. It's chemically identical, and we've been able to make it colorless. And it's anti-inflammatory. And it's, it's, it's like putting a blanket over your head. And then we also have something called beta-glucan-1,3. So you have these little Langerhans cells. They look like pigtails or curlicues that go to the surface mm -hmm. of the skin. They're constantly on guard. They're like soldiers. So they're mm -hmm. always aware of if your skin is coming in contact with radiation or is coming in contact with pollution or something it needs to put in processes in place to protect your skin. And unfortunately, 
when it's exposed to UV radiation, it, 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 it's comp they're compromised. And sometimes they can be sort of out of commission, leaving your skin very vulnerable. Well, what this does is that it attaches Langerhorn cells and it helps them to be able to do their job, so to speak, and to be much more protective and help, you know, with things like the cascading effect and all of that. So um, it, it, it's really just a superb sunscreen. And I have to tell you, it took me a long time to come up with a sunscreen that I wanted to wear. Mm -hmm. I've never felt textures like this where they feel so great, but honestly so protective. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, as long as people are following reapplication and right amount of coverage as well. Sure. But big difference too when we have so many people prone to discoloration and we have to consider like how much of that UV percentage they're still absorbing and how that might affect some of their, their um, tendency to produce pigment. Having those other like layers of protection. And those, I love how you explain it because those are elements to a sunscreen that don't commonly exist, but also people don't consider as far as other effects of UV, like helping linger on cells. Like that's, I'm so happy we were able to dive into that because and it means a lot more when you understand the other thing the Now, I'm not wearing any foundation, but mm -hmm. like everyone else, I have my, you know, I have a day now and then where I get up in the morning and I say, oh my God, I was trying to sleep but my skin was out partying all night. <laughs> and so, you know, you, I want to make it look a little bit more polished or a little bit just whatever is going on. And so the SPF 45 tinted is incredibly light, it, but it just gives you enough that you look more polished, your skin looks more even, and it's, it's, it, but you it don't look like you're wearing anything. You just look better. It and feels so weightless. On. Yeah. And it's got, it has the oil capture system. It has the various kinds of things in it that, you know, also are very protective. And uh, it just, it's just, it's wonderful to be able to have that option. Now, I, if I do use it, I use it over my 33. And the reason is, is because you should be putting your sunscreen here, here, over your ears, your mouth. And I'm not going to put the 45 down here and stain my clothes. Yeah. So I actually almost use it like a foundation. That's insane. That's fantastic. Okay, Jan, if we could talk about any, we'll have to wrap up in a couple minutes, but if we could um, talk about any, uh, we mentioned the variations of the, of the systems. So there's normal dry and there's a dry skin system yeah. for those who are unfamiliar. And also kind of, you can, you can sort of modify it from there too. Yeah. So too. if you could, uh, I, I want people to understand too that management system, we talked about how foundational this is and we were able to discuss today like all the elements that are really in there. But we, this is also compatible with what we're referring to as accelerators. So do you want to give just a comment on that? So accelerators are things that we add into the system to address specific concerns. For example, duality for acne. There's no cure for acne, but you can complete total clearing. Complete total clearing. I'm a two-time Accutane failure. I don't break out ever. If I didn't do what I do every day, I would. But Duality also de-ages the appearance of skin as well as addresses acne. So it's not, you know, your, your mother's acne product or your kid's acne product. It's revolutionary. The other thing is discoloration. That's luminant. By the age of 35, 100% of every single person on the face of the earth, this is an absolute statistic that a medical statistic will have some type of abnormal pigmentation. Discoloration is a huge issue. That's luminant. We have technology, some really game-changing technology in there that you don't see anywhere else. Rosacea. No cure for rosacea. And there's no cure for discoloration, but we can manage it. No cure for rosacea. We can manage it. And rosacea affects over 16 million Americans. That's probably a low number. I believe April is Rosacea Awareness Month. Yes. And it's probably much higher than that because, Lisa, if you work with somebody that has rosacea, do you then send a letter off to the FDA and tell them you're working with somebody with rosacea? No. So how do they know? So the only time you know is if you're taking account among physicians. And so the numbers are really skewered. But also, so we have, and that's Rosalie. And then we have things that we can dramatically continue to lessen the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles.
And I mean, really, really transform the skin. And things like retinol, things like age intervention, regeneration booster. Um, and and, and it, also, there are other things, too, that even go a step beyond that. I always say to people, you know, if you tell me a month from now your skin is the best it's ever been, I can get it a whole lot better. And I can. <laughs> Agreed. So, as an example, there are products that can do further resurfacing and further clarification, like the Marini multi-acid resurfacing pads. Anybody can use them. It's a, it's a jar that's filled with 30 pads that are pre-soaked with acids. And you do that, you know, twice a week, three times a week. And it is incredible for continuing that resurfacing product, working on the appearance of whether if you have, you know, minor acne scars, if you want your follicles to get even more and more refined looking and then there's also the newer uh, correction pads now those are also for anybody but i specifically designed it for individuals with acne although anybody can use them because not only does it speed up that process of clearing and also address the texture and all that that goes along with acne but you can have somebody who gets really clear and they're left with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Now we have something in duality that gets rid of that about 300 times faster. But in addition, these pads are absolutely phenomenal for being able to address that. And also again, the clarity and speeding up the clearing process. Um, we also, you know, we're just, we're doing a product launch this week. We just started yesterday. And that's the Hyla 3D Serum, which we're relaunching. We have that in our and the Hyla 3D Cream. Now, I know I gave you a preview of the cream. Yes, you did. Yeah. And I will tell you, um, first of all, both of them, both of them have the same endpoint in terms of its volumization, because that's 50% of the aging process, as much as 50% is loss of volume. Okay? The youthful triangle, highest, widest part of the face, goes down into a narrow part, down narrow, you know, well-defined jawline. That's, that's considered the youthful triangle. And as we age and lose volume, cheek pad moves down. You start to see a little, you know, line, and then you see a nasal labial fold. And then pretty soon, this part of the face actually is wider than this part. Now, I'm going to illustrate that further. Because as we age, the female face, because it flattens, gets more masculinized. And we're all guilty of this. If you've ever seen a little couple that's been married for 50 or 60 years, and you say in your head, they're so adorable. They've been married so long, they actually look alike. It's because the female face has become so flat and it's become masculinized. So volume is critical. And what this does, this is a revolutionary. These are Molecules of hyaluronic that's different than anything we've had. They don't sit on the surface. They actually go in. And we don't have time to get into the whole, we'll, we'll do something on just hyaluronic acid. But what I can tell you is that when hyaluronic acid sits in a reservoir, and this is what happens with injectables. With injectables, it's not the hyaluronic acid that gives you the correction. It acts as a scaffolding for collagen. Collagen forms around the hyaluronic acid injection. So when you can get these tiny molecules in there topically, it acts as a scaffolding for collagen. Doesn't replace injectables, but it just gives this really nice 3D volumization. The serum is for anybody. So probably in the summertime, I would use a serum day and night. Yeah. But in colder weather, or if you have drier skin, then it also goes after compromised barrier function and um, I'll, I'll give you an example so that for, for example the serum has something in it that causes you to actually produce more of your own hyaluronic acid it also causes you to produce more um, elastin it also has anti-inflammatories and it's packed with other things the cream because now we're talking about barrier function also with drier skin is that it reduces the appearance of fine lines in two hours. Um, and not only that, it there's 24-hour hydration. And after two weeks, 
the water retained by these corneocytes, you know, I talked about increased corneocyte cohesion where they harden and they, and they, and they cornify. The water in that is increased by over 85%. Cell membrane fluidity. Now, fluidity is really important because your cell membranes harden as you get older. The cell membrane fluidity is increased by 40%. That's typical of young, healthy skin. Mm -hmm. And also, we have something that regulates water content. It helps to prevent trans-epidermal moisture loss. It's upregulated by over 144%, something called AQP3. And I could go on and on. Um, yeah. But I know that you've tried it, and, I, and you were really impressed. And one other thing is that it has something in there called tocotrienol. Now, we've, you know, we've all grown up hearing about vitamin E. So vitamin E is a miracle topical. Vitamin E doesn't really get into your skin well at all. But tocotrienol is a form of vitamin E that has a flexible end chain that actually penetrates. And there's a number of reasons why this is a good thing. But when you're in really harsh weather conditions and your skin, if it tends to be on the drier side, and you, have, you get compromised barrier function, what this does is it's anti-inflammatory and it actually resists and will maintain more of a normal reaction with total trionol. The thing that I need to really emphasize is this is not an or product. This is an and product. In other words, it's not, I use transformation or. You put this on before your transformation, before your age intervention, whether using the cream or the serum in that window that we call 3.5 between where all accelerators go between BioClear and between the hydrator. And you can, you know, you can mix and match. It's, it doesn't have to be in a particular order, but um, that's where it goes. And this is, this is just kind of another really sort of revolutionary breakthrough. Oh, absolutely revolutionary. Different technologies for different benefits. Jan, it's going to cut me off in like one minute and end, but I want to answer one question because I love Lana or Lana here has had some beautiful comments. So she asked, can we use multiple accelerators with the system or just one? No, you can, you, you wouldn't want to start off with them all at once because you first you would acclimate to the system, but you can, you can use as many accelerators as you have concerns. You could be using duality and you could be using luminate. And you could be using, and you could be using the Hyla 3D. Yeah, a lot of great and, options. And you could be using resurfacing pads, or Cleanzyme and Skinzyme. And we'd love to tell you more about them. So if you have questions, you can DM, you can text the spa. We'd love to tell you more about them. Also, quick note for everyone who is on the live: we are giving away two products from the system, sunscreen and moisturizer. So we will contact you. Put it on Instagram here. Jan, thank you so much for your time and for sharing uh, all this beautiful skin wisdom. Guys, you have to get in touch with Lisa because she's a real expert in this. I mean, really, uh, she's she just ha has a, a wealth of knowledge. She's really good at this. And everybody who's watching, thank you so much. I know I wouldn't be here without you. Thank you. And let's do it again soon, okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jan. And thank you, everyone, for watching. I appreciate it. Oh, see you. My pleasure. Bye-bye.